So hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to October Lunch Bunch. I can't believe it's October. Um, I'm Ruth Jones with the Minds Foundation, and we are delighted to, that so many of you um, around campus, around the country, and literally around the world um, have joined us today. We've got a great group. Um, you all have been with us, uh, many of you, for, for these programs, but for those that are newer, um, a reminder that as we go through the program, uh, please feel free to submit your questions in the sidebar. Um, <clears throat> we did have several of you submit questions ahead of time for our speakers uh, when you guys RSVP. So we have made notes uh, of those and do our best to answer those. Any that we don't have time for during today's session will certainly follow up, so not to worry. Um, also a reminder that all of these sessions are recorded. And so if you wanna watch this again or share it with a friend, uh, all of the sessions are stored on our website, which is weare.minds.edu. You can click on alumni and then events. And you'll see Lunch Bunch there on the list. And on that page at the bottom, you can uh, access all of our previous programs. Um, so FYI there. As I said earlier, we're going to keep an eye on the weight room as we go forward. I see people are continuing to, to join. Um, of course, we'll watch questions. And I will also keep an eye on the clock uh, to ensure that we wrap up as close to 1 o'clock as we can today. Um, so. With all of that said, uh, I would now like to turn it over to Bill Zish, who is the president of our Minds Alumni Board of Directors. And Bill's got a few important announcements and reminders to share, uh, as well as uh, introducing our distinguished speakers for today's program. So Bill, take it away. Thanks, Ruth, and uh, welcome to everyone. I know we wanna get to the program because that's the much more interesting point of the day. So uh, as Ruth said, I'm Bill Zish, mining engineering class of 1979, and currently am the president of the Mines Alumni Board of Directors. Good to be with all of you today. I welcome you to homecoming 2020 style. It's obviously different than our traditional homecoming, um, but we're still pleased that there are uh, a variety of interactive alumni programs that are going on this week, including today's Lunch Bunch. Um, we're celebrating our collective virtual or digger spirit, I suppose. There are a lot, of, uh, a lot of events going on for homecoming week. I know the students are doing all they can to, uh, within the limits of the or digger promise, to celebrate homecoming on campus. I certainly feel for the current students that are missing out on homecoming as all of us know that that was a pretty fun time uh, on campus. So I hope they can make the best of it. I am sure they will in the, in the or digger spirit. There are details. You can register for events that are going on at weare.minds.e.edu. Uh, click on the alumni and then events, and you can join in on those if you haven't already. So while there is a downside on the pandemic, uh, as it impacts our, some of our alumni programming, it's kind of interesting that this virtual lunch bunch event has actually provided an opportunity to expand participation by alumni, where we used to have just a handful of folks. We now, what I think we have 40 people on right now. Um, so it turns out, I know Ruth and I have talked about this, that uh, virtual lunch bunch, although I don't know whether you all received the lunch that was sent to you or not, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still looking for mine, Ruth, but uh, um, it really has expanded participation and uh, we're glad to have you here with us and participating. So, so let's get started. Today we shine our Lunch Bunch Spotlight on the Geology and Geological Engineering Department, one of our premier applied geoscience programs, um, one premier in the world. Um, with us today is Dr. Wendy Borson, head of the department, as well as Dr. Steve Sonnenberg, Fetcher Chair in Petroleum Geology, and as you, I think, all know, a Mines alumnus. Uh, Dr. Borson, a specialist in volcanology, is a graduate of both Stanford University and UCLA, and has just celebrated her first year at Mines. So we welcome you, uh, Wendy. 
having served most recently on the uh, faculties of Central Washington University and Oregon State University. She just finished first year at Mines, and we were talking before the uh, call. I know she has, has enjoyed that. We've appreciated that. Uh, Dr. Sonnenberg is approaching his 40th year at Mines. He joined the faculty in 1982 after earning both his bachelor's and master's degree at Texas A&M and his PhD from Mines in 1981. Many alum, including myself and my wife, uh, know Steve from his numerous alumni raft trips down the Grand Canyon. And I can certainly tell you that a trip down the Grand Canyon with Steve is truly a unique experience and a unique perspective that Steve, Steve offers. So together, these two professors will provide an update on what's new in the department and of course, answer your questions. So please say hello to uh, Wendy and Steve, and I think Wendy's gonna kick it off. I am. Thank you, Bill. Um, it's delightful to um, see all of you on a flat screen. I wish we could be together, but um, we are in an unprecedented time, so we'll in, enjoy what we have. Um, yeah, my name is Wendy Borson. I, in uh, July of, I guess it was just last year, started as the department head of geology and geological engineering. It's been quite um, a year. I've learned a lot. I think Steve and I bookend the experience of mines. I have one year of experience. He has 40 years. So between the two of us, uh, we, I, I hope we can um, update, up, update you on geology and geological engineering and um, answer all your questions. Um, I would really love it if you have the ability in the chat box to put where you're coming from, where you're zooming from today, just so we can get a sense of where in the world uh, everyone is. It might be morning, it might be afternoon, it might even be evening where some of you are. So um, I, so that you didn't, we didn't have to look at a Hollywood Squares um, set of photographs. I prepared a, a little PowerPoint, mainly just to show you some pictures of what we've been doing for the last um, couple of months. I'm going to share my screen and let's see. Hopefully you can see a PowerPoint. Is that true? Okay. Um, great. So yeah, we're, uh, we're Steve and I are obviously in the geology and geological engineering department. Um, we are a department that studies um, processes, hazards, and other um, areas related to the Earth and other planets. Um, we're an applied and a fundamental department. We do fundamental research as well as applied research. And um, Bill and Ruth are correct. We are we are one of the premier uh, geology departments in the world that uh, focuses on um, discovery of minerals, so critical minerals, hydrology, uh, energy, and geological engineering. We're one of a very few number of departments in the, in the world that actually combine those, uh, one of the few places in the world that train students in geological engineering. Um, we, despite the, the challenges of the last uh, sort of six months, it seems more like 10 years, we, are, uh, we have lots of people in our department. Uh, we have almost 300 students, 250 students. We have a healthy group of undergraduate students. This is you know, a really large group of undergraduate students in a geology, geological engineering department, in my experience. We also have a, a very large number of masters and PhD students, uh, thesis and um, dissertation students, some of whom you can see here engaging in um, uh, the, the research fair and also doing research uh, in the field in this case. Um, we have a lot of PhD students in this department. It's, a, it's quite an impressive group of students. And of course, all of you, many of you were MINES undergrads and graduate students uh, and uh, have been associated with students. We have an absolutely incredible group of students at MINES and, and our group in our department in particular are really, I'd say, remarkable. They're, they're, um, they have a remarkable set of skills and they're highly sought after when they graduate. And that's, that's an aspect of our department um, uh, of which we are very proud and it is, um, you know, a continued goal of ours to make sure that our students are well-trained, competitively trained, and um, it's a goal to keep up with the changes that uh, employers of our students are, are asking us to address. And we can, we can talk more about that if that's of interest to you. 
Um, we of late have had uh, several faculty leave. We had two faculty retirements, Dr. Wendy Harrison and Dr. Rick Wendlin, and three faculty members, mostly for family reasons, uh, joining other universities. Uh, uh, Richard Palin, Alex GC, and Reed Maxwell. And we were sorry to see them go, but um, we are joined by a new assistant professor, Dr. Kevin Cannon. Kevin got his PhD at Brown and was um, in a postdoctoral program at University of South Florida. He has expertise in planetary geology as well as space resources. He's one of a very few number of people in the world that combine those areas of expertise, highly sought after, and we were able to hire him this summer in a remarkable feat. Um, we were actually, we interviewed him by Zoom and we're able to hire him and we're very excited to have him as a part of our department. We're, we're sorry to see our, our faculty leave, but I think it also gives us an opportunity to think about how we want to rebuild, to, to continue building this department um, in the areas that we have, um, that we're known for and that we have expertise in. And that again is mineral resources, hydro, geological engineering, and energy studies. And so we are looking forward to, to working out how best to reframe those positions to uh, continue to grow and strengthen our department and really change in response to the changing needs of, of the country and the world in terms of particularly energy, mineral resources, and um, uh, water, and obviously geological engineering is always gonna be important too. Um, all of these have equal weight in terms of the contributions they make on our department and, and the importance uh, to humans and the earth being um, happy together for the next, what we hope is many hundreds of years. We have a vigorous, um, research program in this department, uh, as well as teaching program. We, as I said, we have a lot of students in our degree program. We offer, you know, many classes. Um, we, we support students through external funding. Um, many of our faculty bring in uh, a great deal of funding to support students. So again, you can see students in various places here. Um, uh, Kam Kamini Singha, one of our professors has shown as well, uh, engaging in a range of research. And we, we do, everything in this department from extensive field work. We have uh, students who do a lot of analytical work. And then of course we have students who have very strong computational skills as well. So I think, you know, geology and geological engineering are a little different than they were 20, 30 uh, years ago in the sense that um, strong computational resources have been added to an already really strong department. And that's another aspect that we're very proud of. We, we continue to do a lot of research, uh, a lot of outreach, uh, because as many of you know, geology and geological engineer are not necessarily known as a, as a way to have a, an incredible career to many young people. It's typically not taught a lot in K through 12. Um, so we, we have a, a strong outreach program in this department. Um, a lot of that outreach was, is done by uh, the group that Reed Maxwell put together. This was an event in the, um, upper right here, this trash cano, we did a, a filmed event at a elementary school um, last November. It was right after that big snowstorm we had, and this is a trash cano, so it's a, we simulate a, a volcanic eruption in a trash can. And the students were very excited by this. There were also some hydro experiments that we did, um, and it was filmed for uh, uh, some work that the American Geophysical Union was doing. We also, as you know, are, uh, I think we're well known for providing um, a, a applied experience. So we try to give students a, a strong foundation in theory, but also they get out in the field, they use instruments, they get into um, underground tunneling, um, they get into mines to, to do work, they map underground. So all of the, the sort of practical skills that they need to be competitive in jobs and if they're, if they're gonna continue on to graduate school in another place. So I think that's also a hallmark of who we are and what we do. And that's something that we will continue to emphasize um, as a department and in the training that our students, um, uh, the opportunities we have for our students. As many of you may know, in March, we went remote catastrophically in a two week period. We took everything that we were doing and put it remote. So we translated our labs to remote, we translated our field trips. Um, people were running around um, everywhere that they could get to filming remote field trips. 
And I'll tell you a little bit more about Remote Field Camp, and I think Steve will tell you a little bit more as well. We got to know Zoom very well. We Zoomed and we Zoomed and we Zoomed, and we did more Zooming than I could have ever imagined, and we all became experts at Zoom. Um, and it worked. It was uh, a remarkable experience. The university, Minds did an incredible job of supporting faculty and students, and we, we managed. It probably wasn't what we all wanted, but um, we maintained our classes, our students graduated, we did thesis defenses, we did dissertation defenses, um, and through a, a huge lift that um, Dory Ten and Cheryl Medford and Jay um, Erickson did, we got people back into this building as quickly as we could in a safe way. So we had social distancing, we had cleaning protocols, and as soon as we could, we got people permission to come back in and continue their research um, in order to make sure that people were graduating on time and that faculty and staff were able to do the research that they um, had committed to do. Contracts, grants, all of those things. I think we're set back, but we had uh, just, the Minds community came together in a way that was just, for me as a new person, was absolutely remarkable. And it, it's a source of pride of mine that, you know, we're open now and we have very few cases compared to other universities and other places in the country. It just shows, shows how dedicated and remarkable uh, the Minds community is. So I'll just give you a few um, statistics about field camp and then Steve can tell you more because he taught uh, the virtual field camp. We had 33 students register, that's more than in 2019, and we, we had a huge amount of support given to those students, so everyone that applied received scholarships, and that's partly due to the generosity of, of uh, our donors and friends. And as always, we are grateful for what you do. Last year was also a big year for us for iDig Minds. We continued to emphasize the student field experience, um, and that uh, supports field camp and other student field experiences as well. So we went from having a student sort of experience kind of like this, and some of the other photos you've shown. This is not a student at field camp, but uh, it's sort of like, it, it's pretty much what our students did for a number of hours per day. They were on a flat screen, but uh, our faculty also went well, you know, very much out of their way to create a dynamic environment where students were encouraged to get outside, they were encouraged to interact with each other um, in a safe way, and um, it was not the same, but it was still a remarkable experience for our students, and they have told us that they not only appreciated the work that we did, that the faculty who did this did, but also that they learned skills that they might not have otherwise learned, and so that's one of the wonderful takeaways about this terrible event that we're all experiencing this pandemic is that we've learned that we can provide resources for our students that are different than what we were doing before. And I don't think we would have understood this as quickly had we not been in a pandemic and had to sort of catastrophically shift from face-to-face -to, -face to remote environment. Um, and we are now still uh, in that environment. We are mostly face-to-face. -face. Uh, you can see one of our graduate students, Noah, he's outside actually taking a class. He's on a remote class. <laughs> I asked him if I could take a picture. And everybody, including, you know, even our, our statues are, are doing the right thing. Everybody's wearing masks. We're doing social distancing classes. We're doing social distance field trips. Um, and it's working. Again, I don't think it's exactly what we would have wished for, but everyone is pulling together and uh, faculty, students, staff, friends, alumni, people, uh, you, you on this call. Um, and again, it's just been a remarkable experience. And we, are doing well, but we're also looking forward to the time when we can have a field trip, where we can drive together, where we can be in labs together, where I can look down a student microscope uh, for more than 35 seconds and um, uh, come back together again the way we used to. So this is, you know, one of my fond memories of arriving here is doing the, the Weimer Trail with Steve and Dr. Weimer. It was great. And we really look forward to getting back to that, that time in our lives. But um, in the mind tradition, we had a problem and we have engineered a solution. And so it's really delightful to be a part of uh, a community of people who are so um, just can do, just incredibly can do. Um, Steve, I'll, would you like me to stop sharing my screen, Steve, so we can see everybody? Um, that's up to you, I, uh, unless you have a favorite background picture, if everybody wants to see each other, I suppose that's worthwhile too. Let's do that. 
So everybody has the power at Zoom to switch screens and you can kind of scroll through everybody that's here. Some of you have your video cameras off and sometimes we get into these meetings and we tell everybody to turn their video cameras on so we can see your happy faces <laughs> and interact in a uh, more kind of a different way. So as Wendy mentioned, uh, we really have not missed a beat at all with our programs and offerings and everything else. And I thought I would just touch on a few additional things. And then, of course, we'll open it up for uh, questions. So we did do the, the normal, well, the new normal summer field experience. The whole thing was virtual. It's still six weeks. And if you can imagine everything in the world that you could do with uh, Google Earth, if you've ever used that program, well, you, we could probably enlighten you on a lot of other things you probably never knew you could do on there with strikes, dips, measuring dips, distances, constructing geologic maps, ge uh, discovering oil fields and ore deposits and all the rest of it. So the field experience really involved a lot of Google Earth, involved some people, some of the faculty members actually had videos they had previously taken and those were all put into play within the field camp opportunities. There were drone videos that were also used. And of course, a lot of things came back to us for grading either in PowerPoints or some other uh, way of uh, uh, transferring information. As Wendy mentioned earlier, everything was also done by Zoom. And if you can imagine a student in field camp being in Zoom for eight hours a day, probably plus, uh, that is what they did. And uh, in Zoom, there are capabilities of having, as many of you just experienced getting into this meeting, waiting rooms, uh, but there are also breakout rooms and as Wendy said, we probably know more about Zoom than we really want to know right now. Uh, we also uh, were able to remote connect to all of our computer labs at the School of Mines. So all the students using this little program called Labby, able to uh, get into ArcGIS or whatever it is that they needed to actually have in the lab. In terms of faculty working in the, the virtual environment, it's the normal group of suspects, Mary Carr, Bruce Treadgill, Paul Santi, Yvette Kuyper, Kristen Shorey, Steve Enders, myself, and importantly, six uh, teaching assistants too. Then you're wondering, well, what, what and where did you go in field camp? Well, the students went to Moab. Uh, they went to Durango to do uh, surficial geologic studies. Moab was more structure and stratigraphy. Then they went and studied Laramide tectonics in New Mexico. Yvette took them to Wales to do some igneous metamorphic petrology. Uh, then they went to Molas, beautiful area in Colorado. The sixth week with, that I'm involved with, they have options of doing a mining, a geotech, or a petroleum geology module. And in my module, I took them to places in Colorado, places in Wyoming, places in Utah, Ohio, and actually California. So, I mean, in some ways, think of field camp and all those places I just named uh, although it was virtual, we took the students, quite honestly, around the world. Uh, they were all quite responsive. The, the interesting thing, too, I need to say about a field camp, many of you went to a field camp, and you know part of field camp is driving to outcrops and doing this, and you know, a lot of it's time, what we call windshield time or hiking time or something else. In a, in a virtual environment, it is really down to doing the work, a lot more work. It's almost like two or three X the amount, in my opinion, anyway, 
uh, that normally a student would do in a field camp. So the number of exercises from my point of view actually went up quite dramatically uh, in the camp. So it was a great experience. Um, I think everybody walked away going, that's a great experience, but we'd really like not to repeat it. And so we are hoping that this next summer, everything will be back to doing everything face to face. We were actually hoping that this fall we could supplement them not have the students not being in the field uh, we would take them on a, lo a lot of local field trips, but that hasn't quite opened up yet. So maybe this next spring uh, that will open up. Um, I just want to touch on a couple other uh, activities that uh, Wendy and I talked about that she wanted me to mention to you. The geology department is involved in a new venture with some of the other departments on campus. And that new venture is this going to be a new building called the Subsurface Discovery Lab. If some big donor comes along, it'll have some donor's name on it, of course. And that's a collaboration between geology, geophysics, petroleum engineering, space resources, and the mining department. And that's going to be one of the highlights of the Mines 150 fundraising uh, that just got kicked off last night. And so that's going to be a very significant research, active research area and teaching area. We have a lot of, which I'm involved with, and Jim Emmy also helped with this endeavor in lots of ways too. Uh, we have a core lab at the School of Mines and we'll be moving our active and research cores over to this uh, new subsurface discovery lab. And it's going to have a lot of things in it, the thin section lab, and we'll have mineral cores. We're planning on moving the ransom mineral collection over there. Uh, and already uh, involved in that building is the EMI group to the uh, which is part of the mining department. Also just wanted to touch base on uh, I Dig Mines. Uh, we'll continue because that's coming up in February. So we will be uh, reaching out and touching base with all of you about I Dig Mines uh, if we haven't already. And you may have already received some information about that, but we'll continue to, from our point of view in geology, geological engineering, keep emphasizing the field experiences and field trips amongst some other things. I think the overall theme this year for uh, I Dig Mines is trying to emphasize the past and the geology department's a legacy department. And we're not giving up that legacy. So we're emphasizing the past. We're also em emphasizing the present. And then we're looking at the possibilities, what's coming up in the future. So that's what I Dig Minds is going to be about. So it should be quite an exciting thing coming up uh, early in February. So with that, I think um, we will turn it to all of you for questions. So we all teach a lot of classes and I tell all my classes, they cannot leave the class at all until they ask a question. So none of you are excused from lunch until you ask a question. In the traveling around at the various sites, uh, what precautions did you take in either a bus or vans, whatever you, what did you take, buses or vans? Uh, Dan, field camp was totally virtual. Oh, to okay. I'm sorry. We did not do any buses, any vans. Uh, we, okay. have, we have uh, to socially distance everything. And so students have to be six feet apart. If we were to take, you know, a bus, uh, you would probably uh, be able to fill it one third of its capacity. Um, so Field work can be done, but it has to, everybody that goes to the field has to socially distance, and it's almost as if 
they have to drive themselves and so on these days. Okay. All of this is going to get better, by the way. I don't want you to think we're going to be locked down forever. And I think next spring uh, we're going to see an increase in face-to-face -face teaching and also virtually. Uh, and part of it will still be the virtual. I teach a couple of classes this semester and both of those are offered both face-to-face -face and virtually. And the interesting thing is students tend to like that. And so one week a student will be there face-to-face -face, and the next week for whatever reason they may just decide they don't want to be face-to-face -face and they're virtual. So the students actually have kind of gotten into the and by the way, in, in addition to that, we record all of the lectures. So those are all recorded and saved on this site that we call Canvas. So they can go in any time in the semester and look at all uh, what went on in the, the classes too. So I just want to emphasize the classroom experience that we're having too is, has been quite positive this semester. And we're thinking it's going to be a lot better because we're increasing the school is in going to increase the number of face-to-face -face, uh, classes next semester. So anyway, just to give you a little update there. I think Logan put a question out there. I saw it pop up and I don't quite honestly didn't. And so Gretchen, were you gonna answer that? No, anyway, I think somebody had a question, go ahead. I was just gonna, I've noticed a few questions about the subsurface uh, frontiers building, Steve and Wendy, and maybe you could, as much as you can, maybe elaborate a bit on where it's going to be located on campus. How big is it? Classrooms, labs, you know, give us a sense for, you know, uh, kind of the pan <laughs> overview of the project. I know it's still under design somewhat, but uh, what can you tell us? Well, two of us on this call have been, well, actually three, have been pretty involved in that, maybe four now that I look at it. And so Wendy, Jim Emmy, myself, uh, we have been meeting about this. And Jim and I are part of the uh, committee that meets with the architects on campus. Steve Enders is also part of this group. And we've been meeting with uh, this group that we have, or have representatives from all those departments that I previously mm -hmm. mentioned, uh, geophysics, petroleum engineering, space resources, and mining. And so we've been meeting, and if you can, if you've ever negotiated with a bunch of other departments <laughs> and having fun with all those other departments to figure out exactly the space requirements, and how this whole thing's going to come together. Uh, it's going to be located uh, right behind the new parking garage on the west side of campus, real close to, if you attended the thing last night and the president showed you the where the innovation hub is now going to be located, this is going to be right next to the innovation hub. And if you know where the, uh, Mines Geology Museum is. It's just to the west of the Mines Geology Museum. So it's in a great location. It's going to be a, a center of excellence, if you will, have programs of excellence. The, it's going to connect up really to the Innovation Hub and, and all the rest of it uh, quite nicely. I'm not going to give you the exact square footage. Uh, although it's in my notes someplace because I simply can't remember it, but it'll be a nice size building that is going to accommodate uh, EMI and then uh, various things that geology, geophysics, petroleum engineering, space resources, and uh, EMI is part of the mining department that we all need. So it'll be a sizable building. It's going to be what we call a clean lab and a dirty lab set up, uh, very hands-on research and a, also be a great uh, teaching facility. So we've had a lot of fun with the organization of all that and uh, it's, it's interesting to work with all the various groups 
on campus. And it was like two weeks ago or three weeks ago that we had one of these meetings with all the interested parties. And we all walked away going, I think we have an agreement of <laughs> all the space. It was absolutely remarkable without anybody doing any significant pushback. So it's a building that's going to be require about 16, 15, 16 million dollars um, to construct. And uh, we, and I should also mention that this entire project is going to be uh, with private money. And so we will be moving into a campaign, if you will, to raise money for this building. We being, when I say that, uh, those departments that I just mentioned, uh, Wendy Borson, our department head, she's a fundraiser from her past life. I'll be helping with this. Jim Emmy will be helping with this uh, and a lot of other people. So that's a great opportunity for uh, some of you if you're interested in some place that you want to focus your money towards, uh, focus it to this subsurface discovery lab. Uh, since I can, since you invited me to give that little advertisement, I will. <laughs> okay, other questions? Just real quick, it's about 30,000 square feet. Okay. Um, and this building is actually separate from the, the larger building that's called the Subsurface Frontiers Building. That is the collaboration between MINES and the U.S. Geological Survey. That building um, you know, sort of the plans for it were suspended when we went remote and we're in the process of uh, reinvigorating that process, that, that uh, process right now. So we're hopeful that that project will go forward as well. So th those two buildings will be, um, you know, extremely important. And having the USGS on campus when that, when we're able to build that building and bring about 120 USGS people onto campus will really change the, the presence that MIND has in the larger area of critical mineral subsurface discovery. So it involves geophysics, hydrology, geology and geological engineering, space resources, and several other groups on campus. So it's a very, and then there'll be a, a, a lot of USGS people in the building as well. Two separate buildings, both under this broader um, sort of theme of subsurface, which is one of the kind of major themes of the MINDS at 150. Um, endeavors that we're trying to, to sort of emphasize between now and two, 2024. So um, we're really excited about both of those buildings and they both will in, sort of enhance the way our students interact with stuff, cores and rocks and um, all of the equipment that we use, especially analytical equipment. Um, and and uh, I think having a, a premier location for our core lab and for the ransom collection is really important to this department to um, help our students, but also just to increase the outreach we can do to other groups that might benefit from using those resources. Right now, it's, it's not that easy to share, and that's a priority for at least, I feel like that's one of the things that we should really focus on because we have world-class collections here, and we're not using them, I think, to the best possible extent. I did see a question about when will construction begin? I guess the question was, has it begun? And it has not but it won't really begin until 2022, I think is the estimate when that'll start happening. But the funding has to be in place uh, before that thing kicks off. Uh, but it is an opportunity again for uh, perhaps some of you. Um, part of the news from the department too is some of our illustrious faculty members, it's kind of the sad news, one of them, Professor Emeritus John Hahn, uh, passed away uh, fairly recently. Uh, he was 99 and three quarters, almost made it to 100 years. Uh, the geology department uh, along, and some of you are involved in this too, Tom Dimelo I know is online here, we established a Han Endowment Fund, and uh, a lot of you contributed to that. And I think 
the question came up at least privately to me was how much money's in the endowment now in that fund. And uh, so with commitments and actually received gifts, uh, it's probably around $120,000. So thank all of you alums from geology department uh, honoring Professor John Hahn in a very nice way. Steve and Wendy, um, before we get too much further, I know Logan has had his hand raised. Um, Logan, did we already address your question or did you uh, have a comment? Uh, it was just addressed. Uh, oh, very I good. Asked Dr. Sonnenberg if he could give us an update on the on endowment, which he just gave. But let me, also give, let me also give a pitch for Steve and Tom Dimolo, who had approached me and I'm sure many others about this particular endowment and the um, strong feelings that I have about uh, Dr. Hahn's involvement with the department uh, while I was there in the early 1970s and the particularly important role that he played for a number of students, including myself, on questions of ethics and application of the science of petroleum geology to public service. Dr. Hahn was a member of the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission, as was Dr. Sonnenberg and several other graduates from our school and our department. And Professor Hahn acted as the central person then for those particular students who were interested in focus on public service. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Tom. Great job. You are giving away that money now, eh? That's, the, that's actually the fun part. In the, is the endowment is to a state now that we can actually start handing that out to uh, students, which, an, which is another opportunity in our department uh, in terms of fundraising. I have to be a little careful here because I'm also the chairman of what we call our enhancement committee in the geology, geological engineering department where we, that is our purpose is to raise monies. And in the past we raised money for the uh, Bob Weimer geology chair. I see Leslie Woods on with us too. She holds that chair now. And so uh, we periodically are either raising scholarships, fellowships, or monies for chairs uh, within our department too, amongst, you know, what we're doing with iDig Mines and trying to emphasize the, the field experiences, not only the regular field trips that we have, but field camp uh, and so on. So anyway, lots of fun things that the, the department's doing. I'm trying to talk Wendy into doing the trash Kano outside of Birth at Hall soon, and we can invite all of you to that event and <laughs> not, not make it virtual, but a face to face event. And because uh, Wendy is quite good at this trash Kano thing, and I did not see that other one, and I have been wanting to see that event go off right there between Berthoud and the uh, student center somewhere. Um, I, I'm actually teaching a volcanology class this semester and, and my students and I will be um, doing a trash cano one lab uh, afternoon. So it's, it's, it'll be on a Thursday. And if um, people want to, who are local want to come into that, we can, we'll, we'll be doing four or five um, simulations over uh, you know, a three-hour period, and you're welcome to socially, you know, join us at a social distance and watch us uh, blow up the, the trash can several times, so that would be great. Steve, it also um, reminds me to mention to everyone on the call that one of our goals is to bring together, you know, people who are interested in taking field trips with uh, faculty, staff, and students in our department. I, um, for a very long time in my last job, took students and other people to Hawaii every other year, uh, which is a, a, one of my favorite places on earth. And we had planned on running a trip, sort of a, a test trip in uh, spring break of 2021. We will not be able to do that, but I still have it as a goal to put together an alumni trip, alumni and friends trip to Hawaii 
and we'll we'll try to offer that as soon as we can after we're able to fly be together in the same house or in a you know sort of hotel like situation and be in vans together so i'm not sure when that'll be but um, i'm very excited to take a group of people to hawaii to um, hike around go to the volcanoes we used to go to the active flows we won't be able to do that because they're not active anymore but um we are super excited to do that and we will be hopefully bringing some students with us as well so we're I'm looking in. to do a few more of those opportunities uh, out in the field uh, friends and alumni faculty staff and students to sort of you know just get us together especially after we've all been apart for a year or more sorry ruth no, that sounds great. I, as I'm hearing you speak, and I'm, I'm looking at Gretchen too, we have a very active um, M Club or alumni chapter in um, Portland. And one of our leaders there, uh, her specialty is volcanoes. She works for USGS and she's regularly uh, traveling via helicopter over the volcanoes in Hawaii to, to sense and sort of uh, predict, if you will, um, any earthquake activity. And I need to get you connected. Um, I know she's her name is Rebecca Kramer. And uh, she uh, and her husband uh, help run the Portland M Club. And um, boy, I just, I can't think of a more appropriate, uh, you know, person for you to chat with. Be great That's to connect great. you. So I'll do that. I'll do that. And great, I'll, uh, I'll tag along on your trip whenever it's, whenever it's scheduled. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. <laughs> In addition to that, we've been discussing with the uh, Alumni Association over the past couple of years, adding other types of field trips that we could offer too. And so there's a whole number of ideas that we've been kicking around that would in potentially involve all of you attending. And the idea is to get some faculty, uh, students, and then alumni together on some field trips and one of the people who's participating today, his idea, Tom Dimelo, because he volunteered this, is he wants to do a field trip on the geology of Colorado wine. So that is going to be coming up as soon as we get out of this COVID world. And uh, we'll be offering that up, Some go over to Grand Junction and uh, it'll be a fantastic event. Geology and wine, how's that sound to everybody? It sounds good. Everybody thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. Ruth, one of the questions in the chat box that came through, at least to me, is um, wh where are our efforts on diversity, inclusion, and access? And as many of you may know, the University Minds has a very strong program in diversity, inclusion, and access. And our department um, also has been very active for about the last four or five months uh, on this. We, we started to come together as a, as a group, um, let's see, this is fall, so last spring, and uh, especially over the summer. Um, so we have a couple of um, wonderful activities going on now. We have about every other week or so, we have a DINA virtual coffee where we come in and we have a range of discussions. Ye yesterday, not yesterday, Tuesday was, um, we had a, a guest speaker talking about access issues for, um, people who have various types of disabilities. Um, we're also working with mining through the generosity of a donor to, um, we're working with some professionals on working through conversations about diversity, access and inclusion. Um, so a, a number of us will be trained over the next uh, three months in that area. Um, and we're, we're, as an outcome of some of these these virtual coffees we had, the graduate students ask us, our graduate students ask us for more training in various kinds of um, graduate student issues. So we've actually increased our TA training. And we're also running through the, the efforts of several professors, Danica Roth and Gabe Walton and others, um, several of our graduate students. Um, we're running uh, specific trainings for graduate students on things like time management, mental, you know, sort of mental and physical health, um, uh, how to how to interact effectively with your advisor, and I anticipate that those will continue. They they seem to be very helpful to our students. It's also a way. One of the pieces of feedback that I've heard a lot is that we really don't have um, that that the graduate students seek more community among themselves and with the department. 
and we were working on this before we went virtual um, and we're still working on it. It's not perfect because we can't come together physically, but we're trying to create ways for students to feel more as a more a part of a community of graduate students within our department. So all of those are going on and we're looking to do a couple of, to sort of ramp up a couple of another, other initiatives in the next um, six months. So it's, it's, um, it's an expanding area for us and I'm really delighted, uh, especially uh, I wanna um, thank Danica Ross, uh, Professor Danica Ross. She's been instrumental in helping educate us to really um, help create a, uh, an infrastructure where we can come together as a department and discuss these. Some, some of the conversations are very difficult um, and we're learning how to communicate with each other. So that's a really positive aspect of another uh, positive aspect of something that's going on in our department. Other questions? We're, we're happy to, to Let me just throw, throw out one additional thing that you may or may not be interested in is part of the possibilities for the future and it's also happening at the present, you will see where there will be more courses from the geology department that are offered online. So look for those. Uh, there's also uh, increased emphasis on the professional master's programs in our department. We have several of those that are growing and uh, sort of a halfway to a professional master's is what's called a certificate program. And there's also some certificate programs that are also being offered up within our department and elsewhere in the school too. So if you want to come back and get a certificate or a professional master's, uh, or just come back, take a class, feel free. Great. Does anyone else have questions or comments uh, as we start to wrap up? Anybody? Uh, is, I, I'm sorry. This is Tom DeMolo. Hi, Tom. One of the things that uh, strikes me about the fact that uh, you know, in geology, the more that you can see in the rocks, the better. But because of the limited time and geographic extent of what the students can see from the school of mines in a period of time is limited. But what I've noticed in my career, especially, is that when hmm. we're all the geophysicists were in recognizing what they're dealing with geologically, the types of traps and stuff like that, versus what we had at Total. And uh, because our, our company, French are very uh, Cartesian, as you probably know. And so they have really quantified an awful lot of things geologically as far as, and geophysically and reservoir engineering wise, as far as uh, trap types and all that sort of stuff. If we had a real technical edge and a good business edge over a lot of other companies. And, um, and I think that in the mines program, you know, having the field camp, you know, a real field camp, but also integrating it with the virtual stuff that you can see things like we did in, at Total um, from all over the world. And then supplement that with the court, the programs, whether it's a classroom program or a field trip, seeing uh, sedimentary processes, structural processes for, uh, all across the world that you can't get, let's say in a six week for a field camp. But if you supplemented it with things from you know, Spain and Africa and wherever else in the Alps, would really a student coming out of the school of mines would be so much further ahead as far as their exposure to, you know, geology, structural geology, petroleum geology, whatever it might be, mining geology, then maybe uh, our competitors from the other universities and schools and that have a better edge in industry as far as their qualifications. So I think you have to think about integrating things like that into the curriculum. You know, that's a Thank you for that. That's a very timely comment. And I think that's exactly what we've discovered is um, 
we were sort of forced to go remote. And what we found is that there are um, opportunities that we can create for students exactly as you're saying. We can take them all over the world via Google Earth. And I think everyone now thinks that we're going to keep elements of this remote environment um, because it does enhance the student experience. Um, and it also allows us to do exactly what you're saying, and that is take students all over the world. So I think the field camp professors I've had a chance to talk to believe that there will be a, a boots on the ground plus a remote um, field camp. So we're going to combine the best of both of those to, to train our students um, in exactly the way you're saying. I think the other thing that we're really committed to when we can is we, we've always done field trips around the world and I think we're going to try to continue to do that. It's really important that our students get out, see the world, experience other cultures because many of their jobs require them to understand other cultures. So all of those benefits from, from going all over the world I think it's certainly something that we've done in the past and we want to get back to as soon as we can. And those are those international field trips that, that uh, our students know and love and, and so do our faculty, staff, and alums. So it's, uh, thank you. It's a, I, think, I think your thoughts are exactly where we're going. I have one other quick question, if I may. Wendy, Susan Perel. Hi, Susan. Hi. Um, yes. So for, for next year, um, if we have a, I have a niece who's interested in studying um, geology, geology engineering, um, and she lives on the East Coast, and um, I'd love to bring her out to, to see the geology department in a school. Um, when would be a good time to do that next year? <laughs> what, some events? Oh. Um, some recruiting events that the department is involved with? Is, a, is anything like that potentially on the schedule? <clears throat> right now, Susan, all the recruiting events are virtual. Um, that, that's kind of from the university level. Um, I think that we, you know, we'd always be happy to, to sort of meet with, with people in a socially distanced way. Um, I think we're waiting to see what happens through the flu season, through the typical flu season and into January and February. Um, I guess it depends on, you know, what year your, you know, your, your niece is, but um, I, I think we know that it's absolutely imperative to get students onto college campuses and especially this one because it's so beautiful. So I think the, you know, from a university perspective, the um, admissions office is, is looking to do recruiting events back face to face as soon as possible, but I would be surprised if we're back into that mode before I mean, this is just my, my gut feeling. It has nothing to do with anything anybody said, but well, what they said is we're not there yet. Um, but, you know, certainly meeting with you and your niece, I mean, we'd be happy to do that anytime you want. We can do that in a socially distanced way. We can give you a tour of the, de uh, the department. We can talk about what geologists do. All of those things um, are possible on a sort of an anecdotal basis right now. Um, hopefully by March, of next year. Oh, yeah, if, that'd if, be good. If we think there's going to be a vaccine, I think that's, I think everything we're doing in large group context is, is contingent on having a vaccine. I don't think we're going to be able to get back to those events until we have a vaccine. So all of you who know bio, you know, biochemists and we just need to accelerate that process as it's, you know, people are already doing that right now. So I guess fingers crossed at this point. I might also chime in, Susan. Um, I do a lot of work with our admissions uh, office on campus, and they indeed are continuing to do their recruiting events, as Wendy said, uh, virtually, uh, and will be doing so for a while. But um, if your niece is at the point where she'd like to get an overview about mines in addition to the department, um, there are two events coming up. They're called Preview Mines. Uh, imagine that. And it's uh, November 7th and then again on November 14th. And I'd be happy to connect with you to give you that information and those links. Uh, it's an opportunity to just log on and listen and put names with faces and figure out what is this thing called the Colorado School of Mines? Is this a good fit for me? And then uh, if she'd like to learn more, of course, I'm sure Wendy and Steve would be happy to, to connect uh, one off. To, to get more into the weeds. So there are opportunities all the time. They're just different right now, um, but I'm happy to, to connect those dots for you when you're ready. Thanks so much. Yeah, you bet. 
Well, we are at one o'clock or thereabouts. Uh, so I would like to uh, thank everybody for joining us today. It's been a great discussion. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, lots of exciting initiatives about to unfold, as we all know. Um, and you can continue staying connected with these uh, programs and information every month with Lunch Bunch. Our next one is coming up on Thursday, November 19th, when we will host uh, our petroleum department, petroleum engineering. We'll hear from Dr. Jennifer Miskimmons, as well as Will Fleckenstein and uh, Jim Crompton, and they'll give an update on what they're doing at their shop. So um, always an opportunity to get the latest scoop. Um, I'll also put in a plug now for our December program, which will be a Q&A with President Paul Johnson. There's not really an agenda. It's, it's whatever you dictate, <laughs> whatever questions you have of the president. So all of these programs, as well as the recording of this one and previous programs are on our Lunch Bunch page on the Alumni Foundation website, again, which is weare.minds.edu. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, Bill Zish, are you still with us? Thank you for, for joining us. Uh, another plug for Homecoming Week. If you haven't signed up for remaining programs, there's still lots to celebrate. And uh, my colleague Molly tells me that there's still some really cool headbands available if you're gonna do the 5K, the virtual 5K. So y'all get up there and, and get after it. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. Have a great afternoon. It's good to see your faces, and uh, we'll connect again yeah. soon. We hope. Thank you. Stay healthy, everyone. Thanks thank for, you for your time. Thank you. You Thanks for putting this together. Thanks for putting it together. You yeah. bet. Bye, Bye, -bye. Dan. Thank you. See you, Dick. Bye, everybody.